Hello and welcome to this month's Maggie Moment. Today I'd like to chat to us a little bit about our vulnerable teens and a thing called the tipping point. So one of the things over the years we've been able to ident identify is that uh, we all have a tipping point. Have you seen toddlers tipping points? Happens really quick, wrong way you've cut the sandwich, wrong colour cup or sisters looking at you. So when we're little we're not very good at managing tipping points, they just happen very spontaneously. As we get a bit older through our primary school years, we gradually get a little bit better at that. And we're a sort of, we learn ways of just not letting things overload us. However, when puberty hits, especially in those early windows there, that there's some significant changes happening and the world is actually very, very wobbly for our teens. Not only do they have hormonal changes, they have physical changes, they have brain changes. So what's happening is a lot of change triggers stress. And then they just have to have certain things happen over a period of time and it's a bit like an emotional barometer and they get to the top and it absolutely flips. And I've shared the story a number of times of a boy coming into one of my classrooms and I could see he was really looking a little bit uncomfortable and a bit not distressed but just not his normal self. And about three or four minutes into the class he got up and he punched the brick wall and he broke three of his knuckles. And I took him outside and sat with him for a while and, and I said, you know, are you okay? What's, what's happening? And he said, it's just my maths test. I blew my maths test. Now, he got that result in the previous lesson. So what had happened is he'd been stewing on that and feeding it with all those what I call ants, automatic negative thoughts about how bad that was. And because his barometer was already pretty loaded up with the normal things that are happening in adolescence, he just, he just lost it. So sometimes that tipping point... Um, can be helped and lessened by our teens having warm relationships with their family, having good friends, um, avoiding some of the nastiness on social media, um, having activities they love like sport or art or music, um, getting out in the fresh air or having a good dog. All of those things lower what's in that barometer. And my message to you today mainly is whether you're an educator or a parent, please don't be the one that adds to that. You know, there are times that um, they make poor decisions. It's part of the nature of this time of their life. They are already struggling with lots of changes. They're already uncertain of who they are. They already are at war with themselves because of a kind of cracked windscreen view of the world. Can we just practice a little more compassion and kindness in our world? Because we never know when they're going to get to their tipping point. And at one of our suicide prevention conferences, I had a woman sharing her story with me of her 16-year-old son. And he'd, he'd been having a bit of a hard time. He wasn't doing well at school. He'd had someone giving him some, some angst, as he said. Uh, he'd broken up from his girlfriend. So he was really in a pretty, pretty intense state of feeling ghastly. And he was eating biscuits out of the biscuit barrel. And he went to get the third biscuit. And mum said, no, don't have any more. It's nearly dinner time. And he just disappeared outside and she said when she found him he'd hung himself on a tree in the backyard. She said if I'd known Maggie he was at that point I would have given him the whole packet of biscuits. So remember own the compassion in your life. Greet them even when they don't deserve it. Love your team when they don't deserve it because this is a really wobbly time of their lives and anything we can do that puts some joy, some grace, some hope and some love into that barometer of theirs we reduce the chances of them reaching a tipping point where they could possibly hurt themselves. I know that's a tough topic today and I've written more about it online so you can go and check that article in detail how else you can help. So if there's anything else that you can, once again, you can comment on this and share any other ideas that help to reduce the stress in our teens' lives because we want them to all get to be 25, healthy, happy and hopefully still like their parents. So that's all for today.